Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Really glad that you are here this morning. Uh, for those of you who are here, uh, on the round table in the narthex, in the back there, uh, there is a, a picture and a, a mat, and that is a gift, a retirement gift for Dave May. So I would invite you to, to sign wherever you can on that mat uh, as, a, as a way of saying thank you sometime between now and the end of service. Um, for those of you who are online, welcome. Glad that you are here. Uh, you, there's already a, uh, in the comments section, you've already got a copy of the electronic bulletin. And our opening hymn this morning is uh, a Chris Tomlin piece, one of my favorites, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. So please stand. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And during the singing of a song of praise, our, our children age five year old to fifth grade are invited to go uh, back to Children's Chapel. And for those of you who uh, might need it, we do have a nursery for infants to five year olds. So, hey kids, this is a great marching song, so I think you should march to Children's <laughs> Chapel. So, ready? Here we go. <laughs> march, march, march. God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of the rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 40, verses 1 through 12. and can be found on the screens or on the online bulletin. We will read the psalm in unison. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. 
He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord, my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them that there are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me, Let you will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I do not restrain my lips, and that, O oh Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. A reading from Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Let's stand and join together in song as we sing our sequence hymn, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised, hymn number 655. Yeah. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. I forgot to turn my microphone on. The day after John had baptized Jesus, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. So I get asked this question a lot. What's the best study Bible? And, and I get asked that because uh, when folks go to the bookstore, does anybody go to the bookstore besides me? I love going to the bookstore. Um, you go to the bookstore or you go online and you're wanting to buy a Bible and there's so many options, so many options and so many different translations. And there's all these, uh, uh, you know, initials and acronyms. And it's like, what, what am I doing here? And my answer is usually not very helpful. Uh, my answer to the question of what's the, what's the best Bible uh, for Bible study or it is, uh, well, it depends on what you're doing. Depends on what you're doing. And that's a good answer, right? So for some Bibles, if you're doing academic work, like sometimes I like to do just for fun, uh, I like the new revised standard version because it's probably the most up-to-date um, in terms of scholarship. But sometimes if I'm, if I'm uh, wanting to preach or I'm wanting to uh, be more contemplative, sometimes I like the poetry, uh, the more poetic feel of the Revised Standard Version or the English Standard Version. So listen to this verse from John's Gospel in the English Standard Version. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, behold, the Lamb of God. And compare that with, look, the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. Now there's a lot of good reasons for having different versions of uh, the scriptures, of translations of the scriptures. And there are times when our attempt to make, to make things relevant and relatable, those are good attempts, but sometimes, sometimes things can get lost 
in the translation. Now, these attempts at making uh, all the scriptures relatable and relevant are not bad and they're not really good for that matter. They just are. They require us, all of them require us to do our work. We have to do our work if we want to find the depth that we seek in the scriptures. So the New Revised Standard Version uses the word look. The Revised Standard, English Standard, Revised Standard says, Behold, look, for behold. Look is much more familiar and accessible than behold. I mean, really, when was the last time you walked up to somebody else with your phone and said, Behold, this TikTok dance. <laughs> behold, this meme. We just don't do that, right? So we can define behold as to look or to see. And while it can be defined that way, it's really more. Beholding is more than looking and seeing. The origins of the word tell us that behold comes from the old English. And it means to keep. To keep. Behold. To keep. Behold, to look, behold, to see, behold, to look and see and keep. We might ask, to keep where? Well, if our windows, if our eyes are windows into our souls, then behold means to look and see and keep in our very souls. See, what sometimes can happen when we only consider relevance and relatability, we lose the power of the poetic voice. And to lose the power of the poetic voice is to lose a significant voice in the whole of the scriptural tradition. And the scripture, I would argue, is more poetry than it is anything else. And so sometimes the only way to understand scripture is in poetic ways. Behold. To behold is to do more than look at something or someone. It is no mere glance or a far away unthinking stare. Beholding is more than zoning out, face pointed toward the horizon, taking in the panoramic vista before us. To behold is to be present in a moment. To open to the widest the aperture of our eyes so that the object of our attention can be allowed fully into our lives. Beholding is what we do when we first see our newborn child. Every feature burns into our mind's eye. That single hair wildly sticking out of place that little freckle just to the left of her perfectly round nostril. All these details and more register in our minds and in a twinkling, in a twinkling we realize that love has formed. A bond has been forged that will not break. To behold in this way is to realize that you are connected forever to another human being. That your life cannot, it would not, return to any moment without this tiny human's existence. Indeed, we come to the reality that our life and the life of this child would be incomplete if either one of us were lost to the other. 
To behold is to do much, much more than to see or to look. To behold is to keep another within our hearts and minds. To behold means the full reality of what we behold has become part of our own reality. To behold is to see the expansive life within another and thus see our life expanding in rich new ways. To behold is to allow two realities to intertwine with creative force. When two become one in holy matrimony, we often hear the story of the moment when they first beheld each other. We hear how they looked deeply into each other's eyes. The act of beholding, allowing the life of the other to enter and a new reality was formed. Two began to become one. So to behold is to walk over a bridge to a new place. Beholding places us on a new shore where our roots can grasp new ground, more fertile soil. The world surrounding us and the world within us changes when we behold. To behold is to become new. We are new creations. We are new. To behold is to say yes to having our life changed as we allow love, divine love into our being. To behold is to say yes to God, making us new in ways we could never ask or imagine through means we couldn't have never guessed. To behold is a sacred act. To behold is to partner with divine love in a co-creative act which brings life into being and thrusts it forward into a soon to be forever changed world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold salvation has come. Behold the Lord God chooses us. Behold, the reign of God in this world begins in us. Behold. We're going to do uh, something here, and I'm going to move here to do this. So yesterday, we had a, a funeral here, and uh, it was a, a lovely uh, service for a lovely woman, Barbara Simon. Uh, and part of what makes um, her, made her funeral and, and many other funerals special and memorable and healing is the work that's done by a group of folks that we just call our angels, our funeral angels reception uh, ministry. And they, uh, they get word of uh, a death in the parish and they immediately begin to mobilize um, and to uh, get themselves ready to, to do whatever is needed to come and help set the altar to um, Receive, to help pass out bulletins, to prepare a reception, to do all kinds of all kinds of wonderful things. They offer themselves, uh, their time and their talent and their treasure, so that a family, sometimes a family they don't even know, 
can be comforted in a time of grief. So I want to uh, recognize them and, and kind of officially uh, commission them. We've never really officially commissioned them because they sort of got going right before COVID. Uh, and, uh, you know, we never got around to commissioning. And now they've grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, and uh, we want to recognize them now. So we, uh, angels, do you want to come up? Y'all can kind of look at them for a little while, and then I'm going to ask you guys to turn around. So we got plenty of room over here. Y'all can move down too. Yeah, yeah, scoot over to your right so we can get everybody in. All right. Friends in Christ, we are all baptized by the one spirit into one body and are given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. The following members of the congregation have been called to the funeral angel reception ministry. Alana Woods, Pam Carter, Linda Settle, Debbie Swindell, Margaret White, Pat Lindy Mood, Linda Canis, Julebeth Carden, Roberta Aiken, Shatha Denno, Carol Menard, Greta Sullivan, Holly Chance, Jean Fierno, Sherry Calhoun, Ned Bailey, Greta Zions, I hope I got that right, Greta, Karen Dodwell, and Patrick Settle. Let us thank God for those who have answered the call to ministry. Everybody, praise be to God who has called you to this service. All right, uh, y'all face me for a second. Let us pray. Look with favor upon those whom you have called to this ministry, O God, and grant that they may be so filled with your Holy Spirit that they may minister in this beautiful and sacred task with joy and steadfast devotion through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Okay, y'all turn back around. I'm just trying to get y'all dizzy. That's all. <laughs> In the name of God, we recognize you as members of the Funeral Angels Reception Ministry. Behold, the Funeral Angel Reception Ministry. And when you see them uh, doing, their, doing their work, they've got these uh, great aprons that says angel on them. And then... Uh, Y'all, uh, Alana's got a little gift for you guys, uh, and so uh, thank you guys for what you do. You, well, I was going to say, y'all don't know uh, the power of this ministry to those who are grieving, but some of you do, uh, because you are here in this ministry because this ministry was there for you in your time of need, and now you're, you're involved. And so thank you for what you do. Uh, and uh, you guys thank them when you see them later on today. Thank you. And grab, grab a bag as you, as you head on back to your, to your place. All right. It's blue. All right. Y'all go grab a, grab a bag, head on back, and then we'll, um, we'll do our prayers of the people next. the great things God has done. Behold, we welcome. We pray, we pray for your church. Give us the light of the nations. Sanctify us in Christ Jesus. Call us to be saints and strengthen us to follow Jesus to the end. 
Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, we come. We pray for this nation and the world. May your salvation, O oh God, reach to the ends of the earth. May all the peoples know of your faithfulness and your deliverance. Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, we come. Prepare for all our creation. Give us sense of awe as we consider all the works of your hands. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving. We pray this morning for those having birthdays. Oliver Drager, Scott Miller, Danielle Petty, Josie Maldonado, Pat Settle. Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, we pray for our local community. Make our footing sure. May our future be secured by your love and faithfulness. We pray for the members of the Funeral Angels Reception Ministry, Alana Woods, Pam Carter, Linda Settle, Debbie Swindell, Margaret White, Pat Lindley, Linda Kennis, Julie Beth Carden, Roberta Aiken, Shasta Deno, Kel Bernard, Greta Sullivan, Holly Chance, Janine Ferno, Sherry Callahan, Ned Bailey, Greta Science, Karen Dodwell, Pat Patrick Suttle. Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, we come. Prepare for all those in need of your healing and strength. <coughs> Lift the set of the desperate pit. Put in your, their mouths a new song, a song of praise. May they know and now that great for them are your wonders and your plans. Now about your prayers for the people on the, on the prayer list. Robbie, Summer, Clay, Nan, Margie, Zoe, Efren, Bill and Carmelina, Sila, Chris and Kelly, Vitali, Ella, Roman, Juanita and family, Abila, Carol, Scott, Victoria and Tim, Ron and Joyce, Liz, Michael, Barbie, Olivia, Lisa, Terry, Ginger and family, Edwin, <coughs> Ashley, Marcia, Steve, Linda, Trey, Cindy, Walter, Rondina, Mike, Elisa and Philip, Elizabeth, Madison, Jim, Calvin, Audrey, Sue, Rick, Catherine, Thomas, Julia, Peggy, and those we now name, silently or aloud. Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, we come. We offer prayers of the, for the repose of the soul of Ernest Sessoms, Jr. We pray for those who have died. In your greatness, give them blameless for the day of your Lord Jesus Christ. Honor them in your sight forever. Come and see the great things God has done. Behold, O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Facebook. Looks like we have our kids ready to come in, so let's sing them on in. Maybe they'll march in this time. Yeah. 
seated. Well, again, welcome. Uh, really glad you're here. If you're visiting us for the first time today, uh, really glad that you are here and you can fill out a welcome card. These are in the pew in front of you. You can scan the QR code and fill that information out uh, and send it to us electronically, or you can uh, get a pen or pencil and write your information on the back and drop it into the uh, alms basin as it comes by in just a little bit, but welcome. We're glad you're here. If you're online, uh, this same information is already in the comments section. Just click on it and you can send it in to us, but welcome. Uh, a couple of quick uh, things. Our annual meeting is going to be in two weeks, uh, January the 29th. Uh, so we're going to have, we'll have worship and then immediately we'll go over to the parish hall for our, uh, for our meeting and we are going to do a potluck. So be, be watching for that. Uh, we'll, uh, have a nice, a nice lunch that everybody will bring. So we'll see what we get. It's always fun. Estimates of giving. If you haven't filled out your estimate of giving yet for 2023, there is still plenty of time to do that. We're still in the process of doing all of our financial pieces. So if you haven't done that, we invite you to do that. I think there's a QR code right there. Uh, now, let's see. Is Dave here? Yes. Dave is here. So uh, right at, at, at the end of Christmas break, uh, Dave May, uh, who is our one of our uh, great maintenance guys, uh, Sexton is the old English uh, church word for it, uh, retired after a long time, close to, close to a decade of working with us. And so uh, I think they're chasing him down. Yeah, he was out in the narthex. So. Oh, maybe he went him. to go get coffee. Or, you know, I saw him in the shirt. Maybe he's making coffee. I don't know. Some, some habits die hard after 10 years. At any rate, uh, he's re he retired uh, at the end of the year. And as soon as he gets in here, we're going to present him with something. So we'll just wait for him to come back. All right. All right. Uh, I want to announce today, uh, and we'll, I'll talk more about it, it on uh, the 29th, but our parish... Uh, annual biblical theme is Micah 6 8 and so you're going to start uh, starting today we're going to start using that as our offertory sentence and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, on the 29th uh, it actually is the Old Testament uh, lesson for that day which is just kind of one of those God incidents um, so here's what it's going to be God has told you O mortal what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And that's going to be our theme for the year. So we'll we'll do some preaching around that. We'll do some teaching around that and we'll do some living of our lives uh, around that. Do we have the. Uh... OK, well, go ahead and bring it to me, please, so I can at least show the people bring me the picture. I make my staff run. Come on up here. All right. So let's, uh, we're going to give Dave, what we do for, for folks is we, we offer to them, and this is what I was talking about, thank you so much, is uh, we do a little picture of our St. George banner, and then we all sign it to say thank you. And so, um, yeah, well, it's going to go back. It's going to go back. Don't worry. But um, Dave, this is just going to be a reminder of, of our thanks to you and the time that you've been here and, and what a blessing it's been. And uh, we're going to miss, I know at least Happy and I are going to miss uh, breaking down all the college football games and previewing the NFL games on Sundays. But thank you for all your work and uh, we're, we appreciate you. So that's... There it is. So we appreciate you very much. <laughs> Serving as a church, Sexton is probably one of the most demanding uh, jobs around because uh, church Sextons have about, well, 300 or so different bosses, depending on who's <laughs> at church on the Sunday. So, anyway. Thank you. Very beautiful friends here, and I hope to see you again and lots of other things. But 
Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll leave that on the round table. And we'll get some more signs. Please, please do sign that. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, so we're about to pass the offering plates, and if you would like to make your gift electronically, there are these cards with a QR code with instructions on the back. You can do it that way. For those of us who are giving online uh, and electronically, when that passes, if you would like to, uh, as a way of you know enacting your gift, you can take this uh, card, this offering card, and just drop it in. Uh, drop it in there as a as a symbol of your gift that you give electronically. So let's say our offertory sentence together. I think we have to go back one. Is it in there? It's not in there? Okay, well, here it is. God has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Please, uh, yeah, here we go.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. In the Episcopal Church, all baptized are invited to receive communion from the Lord's table. And here at St. George, we do have a gluten-free wafer. So if you need that, uh, just let me know when you come by. Uh, one of our lambs will be carrying this chalice. So if you'd like to sip out of the chalice, you may do so. Uh, the other lamb will be holding an intinction cup. And if you would like to intinct or dip uh, your bread in the wine, uh, please do so in that one. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you've caused a new light to shine in our hearts. To give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time. Put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. George and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver 
us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold the supper of the Lamb. And now let us join with those who are online and cannot physically receive this communion and pray with them this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the strength. 
body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, keep you safe, make you strong this day and every day of your life. Amen. So let's stand and we'll sing hymn 510. Thank <laughs> you. 
Try again, 510. <laughs> Have a great week.